Welcome to Egg Bowl Week, Bulldog fans and fans of uh, rival schools as well. You're just as invited as everybody else to listen along to it. Steve, I noticed you're bringing back one of the logos from uh, back in the days when uh, Mississippi State uh, had some really good records in Egg Bowl games. It's true, David. This is the Jackie Wayne Sherrill era Nike, the best Bulldog logo of the 1998, <laughs> 20 years ago. Mississippi State won the Egg Bowl and went to Atlanta. We've gotten a lot of mileage out of that trip. It's time for another one. But uh, channeling the big ball games from years ago. So in honor of that great team, okay. there we go. I'll catch you like that. I was there that night as well, and it has been 20 years. In fact, I was thinking about it this morning. You get this age, you start remembering the highlights. But uh, no championships on stake this week. But this is one of those games, I know we say it every year, it doesn't matter what's at stake. All that matters is the game they're playing, the rivalry aspect. And that's an interesting angle that uh, today in Coach Jordan's press conference we did. Now, here's a coach entirely new to it, although, as he said, he was greeted at the airport by fans saying, you got to go win the Golden Egg. President Dr. Mark Keenum told him when he was hired, you got to go win the Golden Egg back. So he knows that. How much do you think now, 51 weeks after arrival here, he really appreciates about this rivalry? That's a great question. You know, David, one of the things that I've often said is that until you've lived in this rivalry, you can't appreciate this rivalry. And so in some respects, you know, maybe it's helpful for State to have a bit of an outsider come in to kind of take that, hey, it's a rivalry type game, it's a, but it's another week on the schedule. You know, Coach Matt Luke, this is a young guy that uh, grew up rooting for Ole Miss, cheering for his brothers at Ole Miss, ultimately playing at Ole Miss, and now coaching at Ole Miss. So he understands the significance of this ball game. So in that respect, you got to understand that there's probably a decided advantage in that respect from the head coaching standpoint that he understands what it means to his fans. Joe Moorhead's about to find out. And uh, so, you know, we'll see how that, if that has any bearing on the game whatsoever. But, uh, again, until you've been through something like this, David, I don't think you can fully appreciate it. And speaking of been through something, we had a chance to talk to Nick Fitzgerald this afternoon. Uh, he got his interviews out of the way early because this is an expedited week. And uh, your video with him is already on the website there. I, I, we were going to write an article on it, but honestly, what Nick says on there speaks for itself far better than we could explain it. And I think people just owe it to themselves to look at it. Yes, he drops words like vicious and others about the rivalry, and he talks about his ankle because we hammered him on that topic as well. But he seems to have a pretty level-headed attitude about it, which if a guy like that can keep his emotions under control after what he went through in the series, and certainly with a senior-junior loaded team like this who has both won in, this, in the series and lost in the series, you got to think the Bulldog players themselves know how to approach this game. What I think is interesting is uh, Nick – on more than one occasion, dismissed the uh, the injury as an as an accident. You know, he said, "Oh, it's football; it's Just a violent football. game." Yeah, but at the same time, he walked around with that video on his phone for months and, and showed anybody that would be willing to watch it. And so, the quarterback is saying all the right things, as his teammates are as well. We've had some other Bulldogs come up today, and we and they've been asked specifically, "What do you remember about the injury?" And everybody's kind of dismissed that. So, I'm sure they've been well coached in that respect. But it will be an emotional ball game. But I think what the Bulldogs have to do is what Joe Moorhead talks about, play with emotion without getting emotional. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult in a game like this, and certainly for number seven. And, and should he come out and have a quick start, it's going to be a big night for the Bulldogs. Yeah, we'll get into the matchups in a little bit, but back to the emotions part. You know, we question how much the head coach knows. He'll learn. He will learn either the hard way or the right way, but he'll learn. And, in fact, there's a little track record now. Coach Jackie Sherrill, as you mentioned, he won his very first Egg Bowl meeting. Sylvester Croom didn't, and that hurt his career to start with. And then Coach Dan Mullen comes in, wins his first Egg Bowl. So there, there's a track record there of successful coaches at State win their first Egg Bowl. And certainly Joe Moorhead wants to start that too. But he's the guy on the staff. They, have, they more than anybody have to put the passion aside along with the quarterback and just call the plays, prepare for the game. Today is their first full practice for it. They're going to be putting in some things. And we asked the obvious questions about, you, you know how the University of Mississippi, the Rebels, are on the defensive side of the ball. Great explosive offense. You never take them for granted. But you think this is an offense that you can line up and run against. But he had an, a pretty interesting take on that as well, what we would assume as media and fans about that. Yeah, he did then. Yeah. Joe is not going to give you any bulletin board material. You know, he, he is much too cagey for that. He's one of those guys that understands how those comments end up on the bulletin board wall of a locker room somewhere. But, yeah, he said it's about being balanced. He said, you know, running the football will win you some ball games, but winning championships is about being balanced. And, and that's true. And the Bulldog fans right now watching this video are thinking, you know what, 
if you can average five yards a carry against this team, you should never throw the football. You know, State didn't throw it a lot last week. I think we'll see a game plan similar to what we saw last week against Arkansas. I think State will come out, look to establish the run. Aris Williams has had great success in these games uh, against Ole Miss. And so that will be a big part of it. But you, Joe mentions that he wants to throw it around a little bit. And I think it's going to be one of those situations where if they can establish the run, it should open up the pass. Uh, but – We'll see what happens on Friday, but uh, Thursday, pardon me. But I think it's one of those deals, too, where State has to come out and hit first. And on that running game count, of course, Nick Fitzgerald set the all-time program record with 258 rushing yards two years ago when he was at full strength. And who knows how last year's game would have played out if he'd been able to stay in there the full four quarters. Okay, we know how the game would have played out. He stayed in the full four quarters. A guy who had a good game last year was Kylan Hill. He's been day-to-day this past couple of weeks, played two games on a uh, iffy hamstring, was held out entirely against Arkansas, although we're told he could have played. So you expect him to be full strength. So now you've got your full backfield complement to throw against a Rebel defense, which give them credit. They'll come hit you. They play aggressive. They play hard. But they've been overmatched by good running backs this season. That they, they have, David. Teams that can run the football and the teams that can play good defense have really given Ole Miss trouble. Now, that, they've been in some shootouts. You know, Arkansas, South Carolina, that, those type games, you know, they've been able to, to have success on both sides of the football. But at the same token, this Bulldog defense is cut from a different cloth. And I think we know, David, stopping the run is, is job one. And uh, Ole Miss has been much better with the run this year with Scotty Phillips as a running back. Great get by the staff there out of South Jones High School by way of Jones County Junior College. One of the best running backs in the conference this league, but he is on a, a bad wheel. Didn't play last week. We don't know what to expect of him this week, but I, I figure anybody who can play for them, especially with nothing to look forward to after this, will play. So I suspect we'll see Phillips this weekend. We haven't had a chance to talk to many defensive players today, but we did get John Abrams in there to Abram. I know you keep hammering on that subject. It's a natural slip that I keep making, sorry. Um, he, had, he, he was very, uh, let's say, set gray in all his comments there. He was not giving any bulletin board material either. But coming off a fabulous game, co-defensive player of the week, and we can complain that he had to share the honor because he was fabulous against Arkansas. But, you know, the Kentucky player who was co had an emotional angle to it as well, so we'll cut some slack there. But you could tell that he knows that he and the safeties, the cornerbacks, have their work cut out for him this week. They do, David, and that's one of the things you know, we talk about the front four and really the front seven. This secondary has not been challenged a whole lot. They will be on Thursday because that's really the Ole Miss bread and butter. Yes, they've run it some and they've been a lot more balanced this year, but Phil Longo's offense is really kind of predicated on taking the deep throw, those 50-50 balls. Some of the things that Mississippi State wants to be offensively long-term, Ole Miss is already doing that because they've got arguably the most skilled receiving group in the SEC even without D.K. Metcalf. And uh, he's been a difference maker. It's interesting. We had a conversation in the media room when Metcalf went down that that would change some things offensively. The Rebels are 0-4 since they lost him. And I asked Joe Moorhead about that, how they're different. And uh, Joe kind of glazed through that and said, you know what, they're still really deep and they're still running their offense, and they have been. And so as a result, the Bulldogs secondary is probably going to have some challenges this week they haven't had throughout the season. Should they get some early successes, whether they be with you know, Cameron Dantzler or Amari Smitherman, Jamal Peters, uh, that'll be big because Jamal Peters really had a coming out party in his ballgame two years ago and really had a big play that may turn the tide, I think, in, in the ballgame pretty early. And, of course, ever since then, he's kind of struggled still to adapt to the cornerback position, but he can have that good memory with him, that great second-quarter play he made, which, in my mind, turned the whole game around uh, two years ago. Uh, looking back on the offensive side now, we haven't talked at all about State's offensive line, but we're going to get uh, Deion Calhoun this evening, who was also SEC Offensive Lineman of the Week. Congratulations to the senior. And we get senior center Elkin Jenkins tonight to talk to them. They haven't got a lot of attention lately, but they have been probably the second half of this season as good an offensive line as State's had in a long time. They have been. And I, I thought Saturday they were great. I mean, that State was able to create room on the interior. And that will be big this week. Bernito Jones, one of the better defensive tackles that State's going to see all season and really kind of been the heart and soul in many respects of that front seven. You know, Sonago's done a great job for them. He's got over 100 tackles. But Bernito Jones has kind of been a tone setter for them. That's a strength-on-strength strength deal with Elton Jenkins and Deion uh, Calhoun right in there together. And Darrell Williams, obviously, uh, one of the top offensive line prospects for, for next year's draft. So who wins that early battle will be big. And I think State's going to come out with the, you know, guys like Deion Calhoun and try to establish that run game early because Ole Miss has proven to be a little soft in the middle once you get through Jones. So we'll see how that shakes out. But that's going to be one of those games within the game. 
also games in the game. It's still, we're here 11 games into the junior season, and Jeffrey Simmons has yet to sack a quarterback. Now, when you have Montez Sweat cleaning up the quarterbacks, it's hard to get there first ahead of your defensive end rushing at a clean angle. But the way the Rebel blocking has looked this year in the games, yes, Admit it, state fans, you watch them just like they watch us. Okay, and we're all doing our own couching and coordinating for this game in there. But you think about it, with Gary Green on one side, uh, Montez Sweat on the other side, the safety blitzes with Abrams or a corner blitz like Dantzler, you would think eventually it's going to clear something up. Could this be the week that Jeffrey Simmons finally gets to a quarterback and this guy is tough to get to, but that's the kind of matchup that Simmons is watching for this season? Yeah, I think so. And I think one of the factors in that, too, is that uh, Rebel Center Sean Rawlings uh, injured an ankle. And, you know, Sean's former Mississippi State commitment. But, you know, this is a guy that he grew up a Rebel fan, grew up cheering against State. There's no ill will in that, too. And it's always a great thing when guys have the opportunity to play for the team that they grew up cheering for. So, you know, there's no need to be upset with Sean Rawlings. But uh, he's going to try to give it and go. Matt Luke said earlier today that uh, on, even on a bad wheel, he's going to try. That's something when you look at, you know, Sean Rawlings with a bad ankle or a backup center against Jeffrey Simmons, that's an advantage Mississippi State, even in best of circumstances. So I think you're right, David. I think this could be a big ball game for Jeffrey Simmons as uh, Ole Miss will have to pass protect to allow those uh, deeper pass routes to kind of materialize. But, yeah, I, I do expect Jeff to have a big ball game. Uh, Coach Moore had briefly touched on the health front. He didn't give any names out. He just said all the guys who were held out last week uh, are still day-to-day. -day. That would be Colin Hill and Jaquarius Landrews. But he did say they're optimistic about both. I, I certainly expect Hill to play. Landrews, not so sure. But C.J. Morgan has certainly held up his share at that uh, safety position. And, oddly enough, by moving Abram out to the star position that had been Landrews, Abram has thrived now. And for this week, that may be the best matchup possible for him as well. So a lot of things to look forward to in that aspect. Uh, if you had to name one other key to the game, because I don't know if we'll have a chance to talk on Wednesday ahead of the game, what are you looking for this week? Well, I mean, we've talked about states got to be sound in, in the secondary. They've got to be. A.J. Brown is a freak of an athlete. He, he's going to catch some balls. You're not going to shut him out. You've got to shut everybody else out, make somebody else beat you. Uh, and that's where I think Ole Miss has really struggled without D.K. Metcalf is having that playmaker. While DeMarcus Lodge had a big ball game, a very heroic effort on the bad leg, made some big catches in that fourth quarter for him. Uh, but, yeah, outside of that, I think Ole Miss has to pass protect. And that's where I think this is where State has a real advantage. I don't think that Ole Miss – without State's help, help can consistently get stops on defense. So if this thing turns into a track meet, you know, State's got to be able to play defensively. You've got to make Ole Miss comfortable. You've got to make Tiamo do some things, get further into his reach, which will enable guys like Montez Sweat. And so pass rush against a Rebel offensive line that has been pretty good down the stretch, it's a little bit beat up now. I think that's where the game could be ultimately won or lost. I'm going to say the game will ultimately be won or lost, not on the field, but on the sideline in the booth. I think it's going to come down to State's play calling. Yes, it's always about execution. We understand that. But I don't think you can come out like you did this past weekend and commit to first down passing all the time like against Arkansas. Now, you always felt that on second and third down you could run the ball if you had to and make it. I don't think you can afford to do that simply for the reason that Ole Miss is an offense that is going to hit their home runs. They're going to score. They're just that good at it. But they score their points early. If you can stay with them, match their points, or better yet, have a lead through halftime, then you feel good. And I think that's going to come down to the play selection, the matchups they get with the personnel they have ready for this game. To me, that's where the game's going to be won or lost. This, is, this may truly be one of those rare egg bowls that's won by the coaching as much as it is by the players. But that's just one dog's opinion, and I'm sure we all have our takes on how it is. Uh, quickly, Steve, we had a little bit of recruiting news today as well. Yeah, Javante Payton, uh, interestingly enough, former Ole Miss signee, Commits to Mississippi State on the Monday of Egg Ball Week. I mean, pretty interesting timing there. It just kind of worked out that way. He took an official visit to State this weekend. It was believed to be between Mississippi State and Tennessee down the stretch. His dad, a high school coach, a guy that, uh, that understands the game, understands the recruiting process, uh, endorses the, the decision. Big news for State. That's a position of need. Uh, one of the things, too, David, to kind of get back on the, what you were saying about the big moments in the ball game. Talked to a lot of former Bulldogs here in the last couple of weeks, specifically about Egg Bowls and about playing in rivalry games. Rocky Falker told me on Thursday evening, the team that generally settles in mm -hmm. first has a decided advantage because it is such an emotional game and you understand what it means to your fans and what it means to come back and, and face the students that you see uh, around campus. And so the team that can come out and, and play with passion, as Jim Moorhead says, but not be emotional, uh, will likely have a huge advantage. And so 
that's where I think State has to really control Nick Fitzgerald because the first time somebody tackles him low, mm -hmm. intentionally or unintentionally, that's going to elicit an emotional reaction from fans and from the teammates. And so State's got to kind of measure that and be sure that they, that they stick to the game plan and not let their emotions run wild. So that's all we can wrap up on this Monday with uh, two more practice days ahead for the Bulldogs. Again, a little bit early practice today. We'll get some players tonight, a couple of coaches, possibly some interviews on Tuesday night. But after that, it's entirely shut down as they get ready for their 630 kickoff Thursday evening in Oxford. I'll be there. And uh, I have to say that uh, if I was going to wear a logo, which I won't, I don't, I don't wear the colors at games. I have to act somewhat professional. I still prefer the, what they used to call the old Rebel Rouser or Chopper Bulldog was my favorite. It's a good uh, one too. Yeah, it's a, good, it's a good old one, but then I'm an old guy. What can I say? I've seen way too many of these Egg Bowls maybe, but always looking forward to the next one because it's the Egg Bowl. What else do we need to say about this week? So for our crew from Gene's Page 24-7 with all the content we'll have coming out this week ahead of the game, here on the campus of Mississippi State University, for Steve Robertson, this is David Murray.